Good morning, church. Good morning, Good morning and win forever. Emmanuel, if God be for us, who can be against us? Trials, tribulation, temptation, worries, absolutely nothing. We have a question for us today. How many of us have said thank you, Jesus, for the life we live? How many of us have said thank you, Jesus, for the air we breathe? In the morning. In the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. In the morning, and in the morning, in the Say thank you, Jesus, for the grace to talk. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace to walk. Thank you, Jesus, for the ability to see. Thank you, Jesus, for the life I live. Thank you, Jesus, for the air I breathe. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace to stand. Thank you, Jesus. For the grace to hear. Thank you, Jesus. Tell your neighbor, cheer up. Cheer up. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Viewers all over the world. We greet you, Emmanuel. Don't forget to say thank you, Jesus. We say to you, viewers, cheer up. Jesus loves you. Tell someone close to you, say love. love. Hopes in faith. Love. That would be our message for today. Love, hopes, and faith. In quote, you can put the true reality. Guess what is the true reality? Love, hopes, and faith. Hallelujah. Quickly, because of time, let's open our Bible to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. We take our reading from verse 23 to 24. And also, we are going to read the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 6. Hallelujah. It says, Let us hold fast. The confession of our hope. Think about that. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. It says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or no circumcision avails anything. Neither what? Circumcision or non-circumcision avails anything. But faith working through love. That's what the faith working through love. I can't hear you. Hmm. Faith. Working through love. Only these three things will last. Faith, hope, and love. Therefore, as children of God, 
Let us abide in them. Love, hope, and faith are fundamental in God's kingdom. They are what? Fundamental in God's kingdom. I will believe that we are heirs of God's kingdom. If I'm right. So to break it down for us, we can say faith is the heavenly currency. We can say faith is what we use to get connected. The card, the pass, we need to get what we want from God. Which is a free gift from God to us. Faith is what? A free gift from God to us. Like Protein Shawele said, that God has given us enough faith to overcome our challenges. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, It is by grace we are saved through faith, which is what? A gift of God. So the only thing left for us now is to get our faith active by being conscious of our faith. Thereby, we have an active faith. Love is the constitution. Love is what? The constitution. God commanded us to love one another, which he led by example, by loving us unconditionally. Hope, we can say, is like the shelter. A firm expectation on God. Hope. So as Christians, when we have hope in God, we have something to look up to. That is why the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Faith, hope, and love, they complement each other. They do what? Complement each other. That is, they go together. You need all of them to be a good Christian. You need hope to build expectation on God. And when you have built expectation on God, your faith becomes unshakable. Your faith becomes what? Unshakable. And you need love to set your faith working. You need love to do what? To set your faith up. To do what? To work. You can't claim that because you have excess faith, you don't need love. You can't claim that because you possess faith, you don't need love. It's like in a country that you are wealthy, a billionaire, whatever you claim you are, and you refuse to obey the law of the land. If you don't obey the law of the land, are you law-abiding? Are you law-abiding? So, so it is in God's kingdom. If you don't love, you are not God-abiding. Tell somebody, if you don't love, you are not God-abiding. So no matter what we claim that we might have achieved in this life, without God's love actively working in us, we have achieved nothing. Absolutely nothing. Think about that. Think about that. If you like, possess faith that can part an ocean. Possess faith that can dry up a river. Without God's love working in you, you have nothing. The Bible says in that book of 1 John chapter 4, that if we claim we know God, we must walk in love. That is, the love of God must radiate in everything we do. The love of God must be seen in the little details of our life. Tell somebody, let the love of God be seen in the little details of your life. For instance, maybe you are a big businessman doing well faithful in your service to God, and yet, constantly, you intentionally hide the profit of your goods and services when it is not necessary. You take advantage of the market, thereby causing pains to the consumer, yet you are faithful to God in your church. Are you love-abiding? Are you God-abiding? Or maybe you are into politics, and you are seated here today, all what you care is about your own policies, your own gain. 
You forget about the masses that brought you into power. Yet you are faithful. You do your responsibilities in the church. But when you go back to your seat, you forget about the masses. You forget about their pain. You forget about their struggles. The question is, are you doing good to change the bad you see? How can there be peace in the community? The question is, are you love abiding? Or maybe right now, you are in an elder state in life. You know what I mean by elder state? You have reached that top level where you prayed for, even in age. And you are preparing yourself for home calling. You know the meaning of home calling. And yet, you are still blocking doors for youngsters to come in. Think about that. And yet, you are blocking the doors for youngsters to come in. And you are faithful in your service to God. He said for you to be a door opener for youngsters. So that your legacy will outlive you. You are busy blocking the doors for youngsters to come up. The question is, are you love abiding? Are you God abiding? Or maybe you are seated here today or watching us. You are the master strategist, chief consultant <laughs> when it comes to business ideas. You know every plan. But yet in your heart, you know that there are illegal ways of defrauding people. You know that in your heart. You know that it will not lead to profit. And you want to defraud people. The question is, are you love abiding? Where's your conscience? Ask your neighbor, where's your conscience? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Where's your conscience? Where's the love of God? People of God, love is the greatest. Love is what? Love is the greatest. Because faith works by love. Faith does what? Like we read earlier in that book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 6, that all our doctrines, everything we say, all what matter is that faith that works through love. Faith that works through love. Faith works through love. Faith needs love to set it to work. That is why today many believers cannot use their faith. We can say that their faith is latent, dormant. Their faith is not active. Their faith is nominal. It is just there like a statue. Because they lack enough love to set their faith to work. They lack what? Enough love to set their faith to work. Faith is the tangibility of what we cannot see. Faith is a substance, the tangibility of something we cannot see, the evidence of things we hope for. Faith is a force that sets God's way to work, but don't forget, you need love to set up your faith. So don't forget that you need love to do what? Set up your faith. Your faith is to be based on the word. And the word commanded us to love one another as ourselves. The question is, do you love God? If yes, then your love for God can only be expressed in loving your neighbors. That is why we need love to set up faith to work. As genuine Christians, love for God should be the main priority in our heart. Tell your neighbor, love for God should be the main priority in your heart. So love for God should be the main priority in our heart. So therefore, you cannot claim that you love God and hate your neighbor. You cannot claim that you love God and dislike others. Are you one of such? Then there's a question mark there. Tell you what, you cannot claim to love God and hate others. Are you one of such? There's a question mark there for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. As the new Christians, we are to love one another and hope in faith for God's promises to be fulfilled in our life. We have to do what? Love one another and hope in faith for God's promises to be what? Fulfilled in our life. That is why faith is the unshakable reality of God's promises in our life. Faith is the heavenly currency. What we need to get that access, to get connected. But don't forget that you need love to make your faith to be effective. You need what? Love to make your faith to be effective. And you need faith to make your love to be efficient. Tell your neighbor, you need love to make your faith to be effective. And you need faith to make your act of love to be efficient. That is, for our act of love to get the best result, it must be in faith. Our giving must be in faith. Our care must be in faith. Love and hope makes faith to be more valuable. Love and hope makes faith to be much more, more valuable. So therefore, as we claim we have faith, believing that we receive what we have asked for from God, which is not bad, because we need faith to believe that we receive what we have asked for from God. But don't forget that we must express love in giving, believing that we receive what we need from God. Take it of that. We need what? Faith, right? To believe that we receive what we have asked for from God. But don't forget that we must express love in giving. Believing that we receive what we need from God. Tell your neighbor, act love and do love. So, we must act faith, believing that we receive our answers from God. If I'm right, it's not bad, is it? But don't forget this, please, people of God. That we must express love in giving, believing that we receive what we need from God. The Bible says that my God shall provide all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Think about that. That my God shall provide all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Can you see that the Bible is very, very rich? It answers all our questions in our hearts. Christ is love. Christ is what? And his message to us is love. Therefore, our message to one another should be love. Tell your neighbor, our message must be love. Because Christ is love. So our message to one another must be love. Hallelujah. Since Christ is love, our message must be love. Our faith must be based on that principle. What is the principle? The principle of love. Don't forget that the word commands us to love one another. And don't forget our faith must be based on the word. So therefore, our faith must be based on the principle of love, which is give and receive. Tell us what you give and receive. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. So what do we give to God? Our possession. Our time. Your care to your brother is giving back to God. Your concern to your brother is giving to God. The help you give to that poor boy in your streets, working every day, begging, is giving back to God. The patience you show to your friend, your neighbor, is giving back to God. Your forgiveness is giving back to God. Your compassion is giving back to God. Not just your money alone. Your advice is giving back to God. 
the concern you show to somebody is giving back to God. You never may know someone may be in a depressing state and your advice, your concern may save a soul. So, what do we receive from God? His blessings. The grace to become channel of love, channel of peace, channel of humility. His peace that passes all understanding. That is what we receive from God. The Bible says, give, it shall be what? Giving unto you. Giving opens the door for receiving. That's what giving opens the door for receiving. I can't hear you. Producer will always say that when we give, we receive more than whatever we have to give. That when we give, we are doing what? Planting seeds that will be multiplied back to us. And every true friendship in Christ Jesus must be mutual. Must be what? Take note of that. So therefore, we must give. Hoping in faith for God's time for our life. Tell about give. Hope in faith for God's time, for your life. Because there's a promise there for us that give shall be what? Given unto you. Hallelujah. In one of the messages of Prophet T.B. Joshua, he made us to understand that the secret of receiving from God is in giving. Tell somebody the secret of receiving from God is in giving. I can't hear you. He made us understand that the secret of receiving from God is in giving. That he was giving a word on marble. A word on what? On marble. A unique advice from his mom. That whenever he seems not to hear or receive from God, he should look into his love work. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We believe this is talking to our conscience. You seem not to receive from God again. Have you looked into your love work? Because faith without love cannot receive. Faith without love cannot work. Tell anybody, look into your love work. Because faith without love cannot receive. Faith Without love, cannot walk. Think about that. You are here today to receive from God, building expectation. We are saying to you today that faith without love cannot receive. Faith without love cannot walk. So ask your conscience, people of God, Love is a fundamental principle in God's kingdom. Love is what? A fundamental principle in God's kingdom. For God so loved the world, so perfect. Think about that. That's what he love. It's a fundamental principle in God's kingdom. I can't hear you. So are you wondering, you don't seem to receive again from God? Look into your love work. Or maybe you are wondering that what you have received you can't maintain. How can you maintain what you might have received in the past when you are busy battling with greed, discontentment, not being grateful to those who God has sent into your life? How can you maintain that? When you are battling discontentment, greed, and not being grateful to those whom God has sent into your life? When you are harboring jealousy. God's love does not harbor jealousy. God's love does not envy. God's love does not hate others. God's love does not trample on the poor. God's love is not wicked. God's love forgives. God's love prepares the way to make the future possible. God's love cares for others. We are saying to you today, give God's love a chance today in your life so that you can set your faith up 
and receive that mother of miracle that you have been praying for. Give God's love today a chance so that you can receive that mother of miracle. So begin to imagine those that you might have failed to show love by even forgiving them, it's still showing love to them. In your heart, begin to release them because you are here today to receive from God. You are here to receive from God. So give God's love today a chance in your life so that you can receive that your mother of miracle, that healing you are praying for, the evidence you are looking for to be reflected in your life. Give God's love a chance today in your life so that it can be seen in you. Tell anybody, give God's love a chance today so that you can receive that mother of miracle you have been praying for. Give God's love a chance. Don't forget that Christ Jesus died, he arose, and he has given us victory. So what you are looking for is past tense. But don't forget his commandments. He commanded us to love. So therefore, obey his command. Not just hope, but love. Not just faith alone, but love. Let love lead in all you do. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell somebody, not just faith, not just faith. But, love. but love. Not just hope, not just hope. but love. Allow Lord to live in your life today. People of God, we say to you today that love hopes in faith. And love, hope, and faith are the true reality of God's word. They are what? The true reality of God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I am serving a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus.